All right, I'm gonna do a video on caping a deer. Uh, it's a really good thing to know, not a necessary thing to know, um, but in the early season, if you have to get your cape cold, it's better to get it in the freezer instead of let it sit in your garage. Can't always fit antlers in a freezer. So caping is a very good thing to know how to do. This is the deer that Travis shot a couple days ago with his boys. It's got a really nice early season cape on it. So I'm gonna get one of my mounts done with it because I am in need of a cape. This isn't gonna be exactly how everybody does it. This is how I do it. I've never had any complaints. I've done a lot of them for lots of different taxidermists. So um, if you uh, think I'm doing it wrong, then do it your own way. So uh, the, the best place to start between the antlers, a lot of people will do what they call short Y and they will go from the back of the antlers here, cut all the way to about here and make a, another single incision. So it uh, makes a Y. I learned a little bit ago what they call the T cut. So you go straight across from antler to antler and then a line. I uh, learned that from a taxidermist, one of the best in the state in my opinion, Justin Bach, thank you. It, it is much easier to do it that way. Uh, tools required, not required, tools you need sharp knife. I prefer the Havilon. It's a fairly flexible blade and it makes it real easy. And a flat head screwdriver. You can do it without a flat head screwdriver, but uh, this comes in handy when you do around the burr. So I'm going to get started. Um, whenever possible, you always want to cut from underneath the hide so you're not cutting hair to start. I always start with the top of the T. Don't go to the base of the birds yet. And then you'll start about in the middle of your first incision underneath, underneath the hide going with the grain of the hair. Straight line back. You don't need to go all the way down. Some people go all the way down the neck, which is fine, but your taxidermist probably doesn't like that much sewing. If you got the neck cut off pretty high, you can make a pretty short cut and kind of pull it over, pull it over. So that's how you begin like I said before basically a line right there a line down the back and then you just start slowly skinning away towards the burr you want that T line to go all the way to the base of the burr and then you can start you can either peel it with a deer it's a little easier just to peel it off elk's a little tougher um, and then that's where this will come in handy so this is where you'll speed it up and nobody wants to li listen to me fat breathe All right, so once you get done with that, it should look something like that and that. So essentially it makes a T. And then you can start working on getting it away from the burr. You can start by cutting a little bit. Once you get it somewhat freed, you can kind of pry under there with a flat head and it just kind of peels away. That's the best way to do it is to peel it because if you start cutting, you're going to cut some slices in it, which probably isn't the end of the world. Um, but if it's clean, a clean burr, your taxidermist will be much happier. Now don't probably practice this on a big deer that you wanna get mounted. Um, best way I learned was to do it on everything I shot. And you know, even buddies that shot, shot deer that they didn't wanna mount, I, practiced on them so the only way you're going to figure it out is by practicing once you get it freed from the burr you could just stick this up against the burr of the base of the antlers there in between the the skull and the the hide and you can just kind of twist it and it'll just pry right pry free and it'll come off clean Sometimes when they're real fresh, you can pull them with your fingers. Just keep working the hide away down the top of the forehead as you go and it'll keep on coming. Once I get 
about to the front of the antlers off the burr, I like to just move around to the back, start, start skinning around the neck, and then I'll show you what we do when we get to the ears. Kind of freeze up the hide a little bit. Once you get it freed up up here to about the top of the ears, you can start working on the back side of the base of the antlers there. I know I said this at the beginning, but use your knife as little as possible on the burrs because you will cut little slits in there and it might not, might not come together as clean as you would like. The face is hardest, hardest spot to fix on the whole dang animal when they gotta sew it together. So take your time if you have to, make sure you got a sharp knife. I'm kind of to a point where I can't pull the hide around to the front anymore. Um, to get the rest of the burr off because I'm attached at the ears. So I'm going to try and get a little closer here and show you what we do there. So right here is the butt of the ear. This might be tough to see. We'll have to do another video sometime. But once you get to the base of the ear, you just kind of cut the ear off through the muscle. Eventually you'll see the ear canal. Careful not to cut all the way through. If you didn't make your line down here a little long enough, you can stretch it out just a bit so you can get it around that neck. Do that on both sides, right straight down through the butt of the ear. All right, now that I got a little bit more light and you can see my ugly mug a little better, I'm going to show you again what I did in case you couldn't see it. Uh, what I did, what's called a T-cut straight across and then a short incision down, just enough to be able to roll this hide over the, the neck, whatever length you got the neck cut to, the neck meat. You want to just be able to basically take it off around the backside. So, and now I was working on cutting the your butt's off you're gonna just cut straight down so you get through to the other side then you got a little more room to work with I like to cut just until I see the ear canal you cut right through the ear canal worry about the rest when you get to it now you got a little more room to pull the burrs off A little more room to work with there. Slow and steady wins the race. Unless it's 110 out, then maybe you should probably figure something else out. One thing I will recommend if you do do this and learn to do it good, uh, don't tell anyone you can do it because then everyone will want you to do it. I. Uh, I learned it growing up. I lived next to a taxidermist, Kim Bourne, excellent taxidermist. Uh, I grew up wanting to learn taxidermy and so I went over to his shop a lot. And this is the kind of stuff I got to do. I didn't get to do the fun stuff. I had to learn, learn the hard way. And I'm thankful for it because now I don't have to worry about keeping my capes cold like this one, I can't fit it in my freezer with these antlers on it, so uh, my taxidermist is all the way in Watertown, so I keep them out, throw them in the freezer. Keep working around the front, keep working down by the, I guess it would be behind the cheeks there. 
And as you go, just keep working this hide away from the base of the base of the antlers. This one's working real well for me and it's just wanting to pull off. So I probably don't even need the, the Phillips. And elk's a little different. I did five or six, five, five elk last week. And they don't like to come off the base quite as easy as these deer do. Again, I'm just getting this flathead in between the base of the skull and the hide, squeezing it in there a little bit and then just twisting it and it kind of just pries off most of the time. That time it didn't do it, but it comes off clean that way. If you cut, you're going to have a problem. Be careful when you get towards the eyes here, in between here and there. If you get carried away and you start hacking through here, you're gonna cut right through the eye and then you need a new cape. There's no fixing that. Especially on a short, short haired cape, early season cape like this. Very difficult for your taxidermist to cover up. All right, I've now got it all the way around the burrs. So I'm gonna flip it around. And then now I'm gonna do to the eye. Basically, you're gonna come down the cheek, being very careful not to go too far. And then eventually you're gonna feel the back side of that eye socket. When you get there, it's time to be careful. So what I like to do is Stick my finger in his eyeball there. It's kind of gross. But if, if you have your finger here and you grab that eyelid and cut from the other side, I'm pulling the eyelid away from the face right now. And now I'm cutting. I will not cut my finger because I know where my finger is. And as long as I do that, I know that I won't cut through the eye. So you can see my finger through there. That's just some, I don't know, some connective, connective tissue behind his eye. His eyelid is actually in the crease of my finger. So I know that I'm free to cut right here. And then eventually you see my finger and the eye. And then you just keep working your way down. This is the part that everyone freaks everyone out. It's the eye, it's actually really simple. If you just stick your finger in there no, you're not going to cut your finger unless you're weird and you're into that. There's another spot just past the eye that if you cut off the tear duct, you got a bad day. So um, you're not home, home free just yet. You can see I got the whole eyelid showing through the backside now. And there's going to be a bunch of connective, connective tissue. I like to try to cut it on the socket knife against the socket because i know i'm not cutting through anything important if i do that till it's free leave it alone do the other side you're fairly safe down here in the neck area to not cut through anything but closer up to the base of the antlers here you want to be fairly careful till you get to the back of that eye socket and then it's time to Get your finger in there, like I said before. 
It's gross, but get over it. You can leave your finger back there. Peel it forward. Keep on going. Don't cut your finger and you won't cut the eyelid because the eyelid is in the other side of your finger. In order to cut that eyelid, I now have to cut through my entire finger and I'm certainly not going to do that. Both sides of the tear duct. I like to throw all the skin back on the front. And now I'm going to work down the nose. Some people might go right off. Um, I like to uh, start from the front. So basically pull his nose back and right at the top of his teeth there. I'm making a cut. You want to keep some lip on there. The taxidermist will use that to tuck it into the form to hold it in place. Just cut straight back. And then he's going to have some cart cartilage in here. You just keep going straight back and you, if you've ever seen a Euro mount, their nose kind of angles upwards. So you just follow that with your knife as you cut through that thick car cartilage. Might freak you out when you first do it. But the taxidermist will use that as well for part of the mount. So you want to have it on there. And every taxidermist might be a little different, but if you just set it on the back, cut straight down the bridge of the nose cutting all that cartilage off peeling back his face once you can't really go anymore you gotta do the bottom give yourself some some room there Straight across on the gum line, closest to the teeth as you can get. Leaving some lip there. The bottom jaw is a lot easier, it just kind of falls away. There's no cartilage or anything to worry about. I like to go all the way the corner of the mouth and I'm gonna go from the other side so I'll try and show you what this looks like so I'm just cutting straight down the, the nose there straight through this cartilage you can kind of see it there and then I'm gonna follow that little bridge of the nose or the where it kind of slants up all the way back to the other part of his face Careful not to cut through the top of his nose on the, the bridge because that's another spot that not so easy to fix. Eventually you're gonna have to cut through the cartilage again to get back to just getting the skin off. Just kind of follow the bone with your knife until you find the top of it. And now my nose is free. See this big chunk of cartilage here? It connects right there. You just gotta cut right through it. Once I get all the lips off, they're still connected back here in the corners. I will then proceed back to the front. And this is what I call the home stretch. You're just home free now. Try to leave as little meat in there as possible. Meat will, uh, if left out of the freezer, even in the freezer, might thick piece of meat stays warm for a while, so. Capes don't like it too much.
there you have it. One ready to go. Two, the taxidermist. Okay, I did do, got one hole. Bottom of the chin, sorry Justin. Now, you wanna roll it up as good as you can. This one was all uh, tubed out, so there's not a lot of a lot of hair touch and hide, but you want, if, you, if you have it all cut all the way up the back or if you have the legs, cut down the back of the leg, which is how we do it when we are quartering them out, elk carrying them. It's a lot easier to do it that way when you're just ready to be done and know you have to carry however many hundreds of pounds down the mountain. Try to fold it together as good as you can without touching hair to hide or this, the inside of the skin to the hide because it sometimes will rip hair out once it sticks. Roll the face on the inside so it stays insulated, doesn't get freezer burnt. Roll it up. Double bag it, label it, because if you don't label it, you will forget what it is, trust me. And then charge your taxidermist $100 for doing that part for them. Over and out.